Welcome to another episode of Down the Rabbit Hole. This may not be news to some, but the BBC has a group of reporters dedicated to the spread of disinformation. Firstly, two definitions of disinformation from the Collins Dictionary. In British English, it is a noun and it means false information intended to deceive or mislead. And in American English, also a noun, deliberately false information leaked by a government as to confuse another nation's intelligence operations. Okay, so the main disinformation specialist at the BBC is a woman called Mariana Spring. You might have seen her in the documentary on the BBC called Coronavirus, How My Mum Became a Conspiracy Theory Influencer. This was basically a hatchet job on a woman called Kate Shemarani, and this was by her son, Sebastian, reported and presented by Mariana Spring. Kate is well known to be against the current government narrative and has been very vocal and visual regarding this. She also presented a documentary called Vaccines, The Disinformation War, which was an attempt to discredit anyone who disagrees with the government narrative regarding vaccines. More recently, though, she reported from the lockdown protest on the 20th of March 2021. This was posted on the BBC News Twitter account. The link is in the description, but I've also put it on this channel too. She looked completely out of her depth, wearing what appeared to be a pair of underpants over her face with her nose poking out over the top. Oh, and if you notice, there's a sticker on the post behind her saying, Resist the Great Reset. The first time I heard of Miss Spring was when she was attempting to infiltrate various Facebook groups that went against the narrative. Interestingly, she used a Facebook profile with the name Mariana Clare. Although that's her display name on Facebook, the URL for her account is facebook.com forward slash manny dot spring. Yes, spring is in there, but hidden in plain sight. Naturally, she was sussed out and blocked. I looked into her myself and found her Twitter account, which is under her real name, where she describes herself as a specialist reporter covering disinformation and social media. What surprised me though was the relative openness of what she was doing, barring the slight change of name on Facebook of course. What surprised me even more was that there were several other BBC reporters that described themselves similarly. I found seven more Twitter accounts for these people. They are Olga Robinson, Flora Carmichael, Mike Wendlin, Alistair Coleman, Christopher Giles, Jack Goodman, Cheyenne Sardari Zadeh, Although Josh Cheatham doesn't call himself a disinformation reporter, he has reported on it and retweeted one of Mariana's tweets about her vaccination documentary. The documentary I mentioned earlier, Vaccines, The Disinformation War, featured both Spring as presenter and Robinson being interviewed by her about the amount of anti-vax accounts appearing on social media platforms. But this video isn't about the vaccines, so I won't go into that. The link for it is in the description and I would advise that you watch it for yourself. Spring seems to be the most visual and vocal disinformation reporter out of them all. On Twitter, she often goes on about her age, she's 25 by the way, and the amount of abuse and even death threats she gets. On the other hand, she posts pictures of herself on her birthday, which seems a very strange thing to do. She also won't reply to any tweets that go against the narrative and also any emails that go against it. Although I've not emailed her personally, others have and said they haven't received any replies. She and some of her colleagues are also on LinkedIn. The links to them will also be in the description below along with the Twitter accounts. I personally don't rate her as a journalist seeing her documentary work so far. She only looks at one side which is the government narrative. But then this is the BBC we're talking about here, the government's Ministry of Propaganda, and Spring is similar to Joseph Goebbels, but with lipstick. Questioning the narrative and using logic to come to an alternative point of view is frowned upon, and those of us that do are considered conspiracy theorists. An example of this is when I joined a Zoom meeting with Empowered Journalism and Spring on the 21st of the 12th, 2020. Empowered, in their own words, are a woman-led project that looks to unite and empower journalists. 
I was looking to ask Spring face-to-face questions regarding her work and the BBC. All polite, nothing abusive. But they only allowed typed questions in the chat box. The interview itself was basically trivial waffle between millennials. I asked the following questions. Hi Mariana, it seems that anybody who disagrees with the official narrative is a conspiracy theorist. Some of us question things, especially the current situation. This is a healthy thing to do. Everything should be questioned, so why is this seen as a bad thing? And the second question I asked, as a BBC employee, could you explain why the BBC refuses FOI requests on the grounds of journalism, arts and literature? See the case Sugar v BBC 2012. This was a court case where a Mr Sugar tried to get information from the BBC, but the court ruled against it. It gives the BBC a get out clause from any FOI. No wonder conspiracy theories occur especially when the BBC harboured Jimmy Savile for decades. Shortly after this, I was booted off the Zoom session. So later that day, I sent the following message to Empowered via Facebook Messenger. Hi, I was on the Zoom session with Mariana Spring today. After posting two questions in the Q&A box, I consider them to be legitimate ones to be asking someone who calls themselves a disinformation specialist. I was booted from the session. Miss Spring prides herself on weeding out disinformation and you call yourselves journalists so it seems a bit odd that you would boot me for doing that most basic journalistic act trying to find out information and this was seen by empowered but no reply was received so you have to ask yourself this why are they not opening themselves up for debate on vaccines and other so-called conspiracy theories why do the BBC not answer FOI requests I've had three refused and referred them all to the Information Commissioner's office and they were refused again. Why did the BBC harbour a prolific paedophile like Jimmy Savile for decades? Yes, his abuse went on for decades. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can see when new videos come up. As always in my videos, I suggest you do your own research on this subject as well. Look at the links in the description below and also make your own mind up and take a trip further down the rabbit hole.